Very good morning to you and welcome to the news at 7. I am Iberi Uguna in the news this morning. The Anambra enjoined to promote cultural heritage. Youths to show an illicit drug and social vices. Nigeria to sign multi-million dollar agreement with China on ICT. On a foreign scene, a court in Ukraine jails journalists for plotting murder. And now details of the news. Governor, the governor of Anambra State, Chief William Biena, has urged the Anambra living in China to be hardworking and to fly the flag of the state high in their entire endeavor as worthy ambassadors. Governor Obiano, who is currently on investment drive in China, also reminded them to live exemplary lives bearing in mind. Let me kind of flag up, flag high. We are the light of the nation. Please show it eh? in everything we do. Yes. Governor Obiano, who is currently on investment drive in China, also reminded them to live exemplary lives, bearing in mind the Anambra motto, Light of the Nation. And away from the Artisibo communities, back the annual New Year Festival, a former Commissioner for Information and Culture, Chief Majo May, over the weekend, joined in celebrating the rich cultural heritage of Ndebo to make a successful New Year harvest. The ceremony, which took place at his country home, Umunachi Amichi, in the South Cancel area, is the sixth of its kind, usually celebrated after the traditional ruler of the community had performed the annual Iwaji for the people. Correspondent Chibuzo Obideke was at the event and now reports. It started with a church service and in a homery, a Catholic bishop, Most Reverend Peter Obaleke, prayed for good health, happiness and breakthrough upon the celebrant and enjoined the people to follow the footsteps of Jesus to gain salvation. Performing the symbolic eulogy for his household, Chief Ume thanked God for the gift of bountiful yields and as well successful planting and reaping. He said that the occasion also affords him opportunity to receive some illustrious sons of the area who hold political appointments and appreciated all for their support and Law for him. Fully starting with Chief Ume, the wife of the governor, Chief Mrs. Ebele Chukwobiano, represented by the special advisor to the governor on Chief Tessie matters, Mrs. Vera Okonkwo, acknowledged Chief Ume's overwhelming support and contribution to the Afghan led administration and the state in general, and wished him more fruitful harvest in years to come, as well as good health. <laughs> The ABS Managing Director and Chief Executive Officer, Nzewuchi Nwora, and the Managing Director, Anambra State Signage and Advertisement Agency, Mr. Jude M. Cheta, and as well as Dr. Cordelia Uzezie, in their separate reaction, record that wealth in Igbo land used to be measured by two bars of yams harvested, and noted that Thanksgiving celebration is an opportunity to offer to God and ancestors first before eating, adding that all the cultural displays by the community were signs of joy and gratitude. Irigi is part of giving thanks to God for good harvest every year. So it's, it's, it's Thanksgiving. 
So we are happy the Igbos are keeping this, this, uh, this tradition and culture. The State Deputy Governor, Dr. Nkemo Okeke, Commissioners Ujumwogu, Sidon Adinoba, Afamun Banefu, Bonaventure Enemali were among the dignitaries present. The Anglican Bishop of Ami Ichidaiosis, Bishop Ephraim Ikako, some members of the State House of Assembly, State Head of Service, Barrister Harry Udu, and the wife of the late Iken Banewi, Chief Mrs. Bianca Ojuku, also attended the event, among numerous others. The New Year Festival featured performance by Anambra State Cultural Troupe, Christian choirs, with your music, among other cultural attractions. From Amich in Imnewi South Local Government Area, Chibuzo Biniki, ABS News. Well, Christians have been called upon to love one another and extend charity to those in need. The Vicar Parish Church of St. Andrew's Reverend Kinsley Chukukam gave the church in a sermon during a church service, which was the first in the month of September. We have details from our studios. Reverend Chukuma, who spoke on agape love, said that Christ is love himself, and those who abide in him should keep all his words, as well as demonstrate love without seeking for benefits. He noted that love endures all challenges, and called on parishioners to promote peace and be prayerful always, as the coming of Christ is near. <laughs> As St. Joseph Catholic Church, Nebo, the parish priest, Reverend Father Paulus Maria Okafo, who is humbly centered on righteousness of God and the law, said God's law improved people's life and changed their attitude, regretting that people are twisting the laws from what it ought to be, pointing out that God's law are direct, simple, practical, and can be used in all aspects of life. Reverend Father Okafo told the parishioners that God is more interested in their attitude and lifestyle, stressing that his perfect law not stating that whatever that comes from the art define who one is. God is not interested in your fasting. God is more interested in your attitude to changing your lifestyle, your behavior, the things you do to live righteously, to open up your heart to God, to acknowledge God, to believe that God is that God is the one that is perfect, not the law itself. So that is why Jesus today is telling us that whatever that comes from the heart, whatever that comes from the heart, is what defies somebody, not what goes into the heart. Also at the Redeemed Church of God, Mesisit Parish, Umuzochal Oka, the pastor in charge, Pastor O.K. Abambo, said, God is ever faithful and ready to do a new thing, advising Christians to be patient and uphold their faith in God and to attract his blessings. So for that reason, all we need to do is to stir up our faith. Let's keep believing him. Let's keep trusting him. Let's keep believing that God will do a new thing. Because if you don't expect a thing, you can hardly attract that thing into your life. Prayers for embermonts and thanksgiving from high points of the service. The National Drug Law Enforcement Agency, NDLEA, has enjoined youths to shun all forms of social vices and deviant behaviors. Speaking at Anaku, I am a local government area while addressing youths of the area. The principal staff officer, Drug Demand Reduction Unit of the agency, Mrs. Chingwe Thompson, cautioned hard drug peddlers and those patronizing them to refrain from it as government would deal decisively with anybody caught in the act. Ms. Thompson noted that illicit drugs makes those that indulge in it lazy and useless in life and appealed to parents to train their children in the way of God to enable their children to focus on the right parts of life while encouraging unemployed youths to take advantage of ongoing skills acquisition program of the state government to be gainfully employed, she added that such would also take their minds away from crime and vices. 
And moving on to our national scene, Nigerians have been urged to promote positive attitudinal change to enthrone last and peace in the country. This was part, this was the crux of this course at the United Nations flag hoisting ceremony in honor of Archbishop Dr. Ephraim Ndive as a chartered peace advocate directed by Major for World Peace at his country home, Umapu Oka in Oka South local government area. Our correspondent, A.J. Kabana, who filed the report, said the event was attended by ambassadors for world peace, clergy, friends and well-wishers. We have the reports. The ceremony, organized by United Nations Peace and Positive Living Awareness Center, UN People Act, aims to bring peace to humanity and oppose spirit of volunteerism, thereby promoting United Nations Sustainable Development Goals, SDGs. The international coordinator of the UN People Act, Reverend Uzioma Ozemena, said the flag hoisting ceremony is a requirement that must be carried out to become a full-fledged advocate of their platform. Reverend Uzioma further stressed that previous challenges to world peace brought together 148 countries to promote alternative conflict resolution rather than gun wielding in line with the UN theme for the year, the right to peace. We must prefer solution other than gun, other than ambition, other than killing ourselves to resolving our conflicts. Because in human interaction, conflicts abound. But we must find a way Possibly preventive measures, preventive measures, put it in place so that the world can be a beautiful place for all of us. A guest lecturer, Professor Oushegun Shobeshon, called for peaceful resolution of conflicts in Nigeria, including political, social, and religious crises. Professor Shobeshon, while calling on Nigerians to change their behavior towards others to entrench peace, urged the citizenry to become agents of change wherever they find themselves. The attitude, if we change our attitude, we can make us to be awful. We may not have foresight. We may also make us to have initiative, sacrificial, resourceful. Be confident and also courageous, passionate, motivational, and preserving. What am I saying? If you have negative attitude, you get negative results. If you have positive attitude, you get positive results. Wherever we are in your homes, if you have wrong attitude towards family orientation, you get negative results. And of course, you know what it becomes generational. The celebrant Archbishop Ndefe appreciated United Nations for finding him worthy of the honor, reiterating that his secret has been faith in God all these years, calling on people to always depend on God as their only source of life. Generation, put God first. That God never fails. When you put God first, God puts you next. And next is very good. So, uh, 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 God just don't fail. So, if you plug into God, don't unplug. Just continue. If it happen today, it will happen tomorrow. God is a wonderful God. Others that attended the event include the member representing Oka South constituency in the State House of Assembly, Dr. Namdi Okafo, the traditional Prime Minister of Oka, Chief Benjamin Okoye, as well as the Director of News and Current Affairs, ABS, Mr. Geb Obaleze, who is also an ambassador for World Peace. During the six-day official visit of the president, he is expected to join his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, to witness the signing of an agreement on the National Information and Communication Technology Infrastructure Backbone Phase 2 between Galaxy Backbone Limited and Hawaii Technologies Limited. President Buhari and his Chinese host will also witness the signing of the MOU on One Belt, One Road Initiative. Presidential spokesman Garuba Shu said that Nigeria and China have completed arrangements to sign $328 million agreement on the National Information and Communication Technology Infrastructure Backbone Phase 2. The presidential aide said that President Mohamed Buhari, who arrived in Beijing, China on Saturday, would join his Chinese counterpart, Xi Jinping, to witness the signing of the agreement. He said the agreement would be between Galaxy Backbone Limited and Hawaii Technologies Limited at the cost of $328 million facility provided by the Chinese Exim Bank. 
According to him, the bank facility is for the development of NICTIP 2 project, which is consistent with the current administration's commitment to incorporating the development of ICT into national strategy planning under the National Economic Recovery and Growth Plan. Industry players in the export market have urged the federal government to create a leveled playing ground, playing ground for them to thrive in the exporting business. They affirmed that this development will help reduce export costs and sustain the Nigerian economy. The Nigerian Bureau of Statistics, NBS, says the country's export rose by 20.02% in the first quarter of 2018 as against the figures released in fourth quarter of 2017, which was lower. This cautions at this forum focused mainly on the need for government to further open up the market for small dealers in the export market to enable them to compete favorably with the big players in the market. Nigerian export startups are making efforts at curbing federal government's dependency on crude oil by diversifying to agricultural commodities and minerals, which, according to experts, Nigeria has in abundance. Exporters and participants at the gathering were also enlightening on the opportunities available in taking advantage of the African Growth and Opportunities Act, an initiative that observers say remains underutilized. On the foreign scene, a cave court jailed the man accused of organizing the murder of Russian journalist Arkady Banchenko. Vasi Heistak, head of security service of Ukraine, SBU, said that Boris Heman had been sentenced to four and a half years of prison after he was found guilty of plotting Babchenko's mother along with Russia's secret services. According to Heistak Heman, Heman pleaded guilty and cooperated with authorities last May. Bachenko sent shockwaves around the world by appearing at the SBU headquarters in Kiev a day after he was pronounced dead by Ukrainian authorities. The Russian journalist and Kremlin critic faked his own death to foil a murder plot against him. Haman, a Ukrainian businessman, was arrested last May on suspicion of helping organize the murder plot. He allegedly offered Oleskizy Tambaliuk, a former Ukrainian Orthodox priest, money to kill Bachenko. But Tambaliuk went to SBU after Haman approached him, according to media reports. Kiev security services received heavy criticism from media watchdogs and other journalists for staging Bachenko's death. Bachenko was initially said to have been found bleeding at the entrance to a block of flats by his wife and to have died in an ambulance en route to a hospital. He fled Russia in 2017 after receiving death threats over a post he made on social media. And away from that, Anambra born Tochuku Anyibo is among the bronze winning team Nigeria, which scored in the top 40% of total teams and won two bronze medals at the first global robotics challenge, which held in Mexico. A total of 161 teams as countries participated. The team won in the outstanding supporter and international journey categories and comprised of five secondary school students schooling in Lagos State. Team Nigeria made up of four girls and a boy were selected after a competitive process that held on April 28, 2018 at the Syrian club. The students are Anjo Olaolua Olowokere Lagoon School, Tochuku Anyibo Lagoon School, the Berechi Onyacholam Green Springs Leki Udodirim Iraganachi Queens College and Samuel Ikenna Mba Ozezela Secondary School. Over a period of three and a half months, they were coached on teamwork, commitment, problem solving, and critical thinking. This year's Global Robotic Challenge focused on energy impact. Students had to build a robot that stimulated providing energy using four energy sources, solar, wind turbine, combustion plant, and fuel cubes. In addition, they were grouped with teams from two other countries, forming a team of three on either side. In the process, they had to strategize and plan with students on their teams from other countries, learning the art of diplomacy, public speaking, and various sources of alternative energy. Mrs. Remy Willoughby of Alofo Science and Technology Foundation 
which helped prepare Team Nigeria, said the team visited the Ewin power plant in Ikorodu to understand country's source of energy, and they were able to reflect on how to improve energy source in Nigeria and even picking up a few words in other languages. This was a chance of a lifetime. Mrs. Willoughby, then Governor William Biano, on behalf of Association of STEM Educators in Nigeria, for the moral and financial support to the team, concluding that the team's success was made possible by His Excellency donation toward the team's fundraising goal. Speaking with exclusively, speaking exclusively with the Nambra Broadcasting Service, Mr. Jude Anyimo, the father of 16-year-old Tochukwu Anyimo, said he's grateful to God and very proud of his daughter and Team Nigeria for their achievements, considering the hard work and sacrifice that went into preparation, even while preparing for the third term exams. According to him, Tochiku is good in arts and sciences and the labor prefect of Lagoon School. He also thanked Governor William Biano and the state government for co-sponsoring the team. And that's it on ABS Television News at 7. Remember that you can listen to news and programs on ABS from any part of the world by logging onto our website, www.absradiotv.com. Click on the live streaming icon. You can also listen via downloading TuneIn Radio app on any smartphone. Like us on Facebook at www.facebook.com forward slash ABS Radio Television. You can also follow us on Twitter and Instagram on ABS Radio TV. The main points this morning before we go, India and Ambra have been enjoined to promote cultural heritage. Youths have been urged to show illicit drugs and social vices. Nigeria to sign multi-million dollar agreement with China on ICT. On the foreign scene, a court in Ukraine has jailed a journalist for plotting murder. And that's the size of our package this morning. Many thanks for watching. Amiberi Ugonna. Good morning, Anambra. Continue shortly. <laughs>